<laughs> now he's incredible, man. You're gonna love him. Everybody on board for the clapping of Mr. Uh, welcome to the stage, Mr. John Mooney. Clap it up for him, please. Clap it up. Clap it up. Don't stop when he gets here. Don't look at him weird. Keep clapping. Keep clapping till he says something. Do not stop until I get to the goddamn stage. Dave Lester fucking up my credits again. I have legitimate TV credits and I'm working in a goddamn bar. Sit in the back. Yes. Sit in the back, goddamn. And I am the fucking Irish DJ tonight, not you. We have the same jacket on. I am the DJ tonight, not you. Check one, two. Oh. Sean Lynch joint consistently having more comics than there are civilians to watch the show. Unfucking believable. A room full of performers that thought that this was a better choice than law school. What the fuck, huh? What the fuck? Civilians here and a nice civilian couple to my left. Good for you for sticking around. By the way, on that flat screen TV, there is a loop for Lake Placid. And one of the shots, like, I want you to pay attention. Like, one of the shots is like a nice couple sitting there and like, this far away is like a middle-aged guy playing the accordion. And that's supposed to be enjoyable. Like, talk about being held hostage. Like, what if I just like fucking rolled up on you on the Lake Plas and start doing my bits? You know, like when I was like all deaf jam. Like, what's up, motherfuckers? Yeah, fucking fucking pussy be stankin', right? I get down there, like, ooh, yeah, yeah. It's quite uncomfortable. All right, that's enough, John. All right, all right. Is this far? Is this the right spot? Good. This is good. Okay, you're in the way. All right. So, in three, two. I'm the guy that uh, everyone thinks is gay, and uh, this wouldn't bother me so much, except it just reminds me of how non-threatening I really am. Because I want people to be uh, afraid of me, but the problem is when I get angry, I don't get menacing, I just get flamboyant! <laughs> My voice gets even higher than it is, I get really pissy. You see me when I'm yelling at my son when he's done something wrong. It's like a Broadway uh, choreographer yelling at the dance captain after a show. It's like, <sighs> why is it, young man, that when I plan a play date for you and your friends, you have to go and crucify it? No, 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 no. Just clean up your room. I am going outside for a Pall Mall and a Shasta. No. <laughs> but I'm fucking toughening up, people. I'm toughening up. I've started taking martial arts, Brazilian martial arts, yeah. known as capoeira. Capoeira. Como? Capoeira. Combines all the sassiness and attitude of samba. I've learned a lot of things taking capoeira. I've learned how to move. I've learned how to glare. Also, the capoeira has nothing to do with martial arts. <laughs> there is no punching, there is no kicking. All it is is when you get down to brass tacks, it's two guys dancing around in a circle, waiting for the right time to start making out. <laughs> <laughs> disculpa, say, disculpa. Yeah. I don't know. I should just accept the fact that even though I'm 100% Irish, I'm never going to be cast as the South Boston thug in the sequel to The Departed. <laughs> you know, and that's fine. That really is fine, because it just reinforces my theory that I was born in the wrong century, okay? Because I may not be a tough guy by today's standards, but you bet your ass you wouldn't be messing with my shit. If this were 19th century Victorian London, <laughs> Are you late with your payment to me again, good sir? Psh, psh, psh. I shall expect remuneration upon my next visit, lest you wish to receive an icy stare through my monocle. <laughs> Walk down to the house without my iPod. I hate when that happens. You guys have iPods, right? Oh, love my iPod. You gotta have an iPod. We live in a city, man. You gotta tune everything out between the fire trucks and the police cars and the ambulances. Oh, but I love it, man. It just takes the edge off of life. It's wonderful. Like the other day, I stepped on this guy's foot by accident while I was listening to my iPod, and he was all like, Why are you white, mother? You're lucky I'm a righteous brother. Otherwise, I'd miss your step up. 
because I was listening to my iPod, all I heard him say was, Yo, once, twice, three times a lady. So it was okay. I don't know about you guys, but um, I have a problem having conversations when I'm listening to my iPod because I think I'm saying one thing, but something else completely different is coming out of my mouth. Like I ordered a coffee from a guy in the deli and I thought I said to the guy, I'd like a coffee black, one sugar. But what I actually said was, I like my cock black sugar. <laughs> <laughs> and then I realized I wasn't wearing an iPod at all. Bum, bum, bum. Oh. <laughs> so uh, I found myself in a pornography store today giving those wayward gentlemen a very stern look. Mm -hmm. Actually, I saw a poster advertising the porn awards. The porn awards. You know, <laughs> I just want to say, don't want to brag, but I would definitely win a porn award if they had categories like best listener, <laughs> best guy you like as a friend. <laughs> I hurt my shoulder recently. I think it was done playing Quidditch. <laughs> and I had a big conversation with the doctor about how I hurt my shoulder. He was like, well, John, do you, uh, you play ball? No. Do you lift weights? No. Well, how often do you masturbate? <laughs> what? <laughs> Buy a girl a drink first when you ask such questions, <laughs> There is no right way to answer that question if you think about it, because if you say you don't, you're a liar. And if you say frequently, you're a weirdo. <laughs> so I answered that good doctor's question with a question. When he asked me how often did I masturbate, I looked him in the eye, raised my imaginary glass of champagne, and said, well, doctor, how many stars are in the sky? <laughs> <laughs> You know, masturbate is such a, a vulgar word for an already sad event. <laughs> that's why, yes, that's why I prefer the term rendezvous for one. Rendezvous for one. <laughs> but when you're whisked away to romantic weekends in the Hamptons or Paris, rendezvous for one. A lot of single cats here, but let me tell you something, fellas. When you're a married guy, and you have to engage in self-abuse, so oh, I don't know, five times a week because it's after nine o'clock and we don't have sex after nine o'clock and Grey's Anatomy might be on and you're out doing comedy at fucking nine o'clock at night when Sean Lynch is paying you zero dollars and there's no money in the checking account and how is our son gonna go to Princeton if you're still doing stand-up and you love to freaking pull your putt so much by yourself that you've torn a ligament in your goddamn shoulder! Paul Ball, please? <laughs> When you're a married guy, and you're reduced to doing that, <laughs> and you think of it as a rendezvous for one, you're not a chronic masturbator. You're a hopeless romantic. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> it's my time, everybody. Thank you very much. I'm John Burney. Enjoy the rest of the show.